and the power that love has to heal. Because Christmas is all about love. And if you've been here the past few weeks, you know that I've returned from a spiritual healing center, and we've worked, uh, one Sunday we worked with crystals. We had a table up here, and um, those of you that were here got to choose a crystal. Einstein said, everything is vibration. The law of vibration is real. We vibrate. The chair you sit in vibrates. Everything has a vibration. And so we're working with crystals as a tool right now. Not as magic, not as woo-woo, but as a tool because crystals have the ability to be a stable vibration. And they respond to, and they bring into harmony any energies around it that aren't stable. So we're vibrating. We're vibrating being, our cells are vibrating. But what happens when we get stressed out? What happens when we get an illness or have an injury? The vibration kind of goes out of whack. You ever feel that? Yeah, you can feel it inside you, right? You can, you can feel. It's, you're not in harmony anymore. We're energy, our cells are energy. Our thoughts and our emotions are energy. Our thoughts and our emotions, our feelings, our energy. So how many of you have heard of David Hawkins? Okay, a few of you. He wrote the book Power vs. Force. He's a, a, um, he does work in the um, human behavior. His work is in human behavior. And he created this well-known map of consciousness. And I'm going to ask Andrew to put that up there for us. And I don't know, if you can't read it and you want to move closer because they're going to talk about it a little bit. On this map of consciousness, you can see the numbers. I need one of those laser, laser things. But you see the numbers start at 20, and they go all the way up to 700 and 1,000. And if you look down below, shame is down at the lowest vibration. So shame has to do with humiliation, being miserable, ever been miserable? And then we move up to 30, which is still pretty pretty low vibration. And that's guilt and blame. We never feel guilty, right? We never blame anybody, right? So just I just want you to notice where your body is vibrating at as you hold these thoughts, as you hold these emotions. And then if we go up to 50, apathy, hopelessness, despair, that's victim consciousness. That's when I'm going, poor me, the whole world's against me. And then we move up to 75, which is grief and regret. So as I'm saying these things, think about the times that you've actually had these thoughts or had these feelings inside of you. And as you have, realize that you're vibrating a very low vibration. When we go to fear and anxiety, which is 100. Desire and craving. 125, anger and hate, 150, pride and scorn, 175, everything under 200, everything under 200 is destructive and hear this, to yourself, to the people around you, and to our world. It's Christmas season, peace on earth, right? How are we going to have peace on earth if we're vibrating? below 200. And you know what? 85%, listen to this, 85% of the world population vibrates below 200. Think about what you see when you turn the news on. That's the vibration that this world is carrying. I say I want peace. I say I want to be in a better place. I want this to be a better world. It's my responsibility to pay attention to my vibration, to pay attention to my thoughts. Everything above 200 because becomes constructive. It's our turning point. And those of us sitting here, that's where we want to start putting our attention on. 
That's where we can make a difference. If I'm not happy with everything in my life, if it's not all hunky-dory and peaceful and joyous, I need to start changing my thinking. I need to start vibrating higher. Two hundred is courage. Because it takes courage to change my thinking. And as we go up, I'm just going to go up a little bit on them. 250 is trust, 310 is willingness, optimism, 350 acceptance, forgiveness. Look how high my vibration has to go before I start forgiving. 400 is reason and understanding. 500 is what we're talking about today, and that's love. And you go all the way up to 1,000, and that's the level of consciousness that Jesus and, Jesus and Buddha vibrated at. We're talking about love today. We're talking about the hot power of love to heal. A neuroscientist, Candace Pert, said this, Love is power. Not the fall in love. We're not talking about the fall in love power. We're talking about pure love, beyond ego. Love is a healing agent because, because its energetic frequency is stronger than other emotions. Let's see where it is up there. So if I'm vibrating at 500, all the other things are going to fall into place. I'm not going to have any of these. Well, they'll kill me once in a while, but my vibration will be so high that they can't stay there anymore. As you've done this, as you've done your work, your spiritual work, have you ever noticed where maybe an old thought comes back in and you see it, you catch it, and you go, wait a minute, I don't, I'm not owning that anymore. That's, that's paying attention. That's starting to take responsibility. Acts 17.28 said, For in him, and, and Jeff talked about this in the meditation, For in him we live and move and have our being. We are made in the image and likeness of God. We come from the same source, the same creator as Buddha and Jesus. Our second unity principle talks about that. That we each have a part of the divinity within us, the divine within us. We have that potential within us. Once we realize that our thoughts and our emotions are vibration, the law of vibration, once we realize that, once we realize that like attracts like, that's the law of attraction, and that's our third unity principle, isn't it? We realize that. By changing our thinking, we change our thoughts. By ch we change our life. By changing our thinking, we change our life. The law of vibration and the law of attraction go hand in hand. The universe responds to vibrational frequency of our thoughts, emotions, and beliefs. Light attracts light. This is what it means when we say that. Whatever I'm vibrating at, I'm going to draw the same vibration towards me. So what happens if I'm vibrating down here in shame and guilt and, and victimhood and fear and anger? What am I going to draw? The same type of vibration. Does it make sense? We talk about this all the time. It's a different way of putting it. Positive thought vibrations attract positive people in circumstances. So, let's do a check. What's been around you lately? What kind of circumstances? What kind of people? It tells you where your thinking is. Negative thoughts and vibration attract negative people and circumstances. When I can free myself of a negative thinking that's been actually prog and programmed into us since childhood. All those worries and fears, the guilt, the judgment, the scarcity, the greed, my ego, stubborn need to be right, I don't have that right. Yeah, those are all below 200. So I'm inviting you today to think about, really consciously think about, 
with the responsibility to raise your vibration level. And when we set the intention, it's all about intention. When we set that intention to change our life by changing our thought vibrations, we shift from reactor to co-creator. That's what unity is found on. That's what we teach. That's what Myrtle and Charles, the co-founders, taught. Myrtle Fillmore was healed with tuberculosis because she changed her way of looking at her body. How many of you have you heard of um, the Ho'oponopono prayer? Yeah. Okay, so the therapist Dr. Hugh Wen was hired to help a Hawaiian state hospital for the criminally insane. It was a dangerous place to work. The staff quit on a monthly basis. They couldn't, couldn't keep therapists in there. And Dr. Len never, he never saw one of the patients. He would simply take their files and hold their files before him and repeat the Hawaiian Ho'oponopono prayer over and over and over. Andrew, would you put that up, please? Thank you. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Now, he wasn't talking to that patient. Kyle. He was talking to the part within him that needed that healing. He was talking about those thoughts and those emotions in him that were less than loving. He was saying to himself, I'm sorry for not loving that part of me. Forgive me. Thank you. And he did that with file after file after file. Three years later, that hospital was closed because every patient in it was healed. I know a lot of you have read about this. This is, this is factual. The vibration of love transformed his life. It transformed their life. It's world changing. It raised the entire hospital of the criminally insane to a higher state of consciousness. How powerful is that? Think of what I can do for those family members at Christmas time I don't want to be around. Right? So Hawkins says, Love is misunderstood to be an emotion. Actually, it is a state of awareness, a way of being in the world, a way of seeing oneself and others. We talk about seeing the Christ in each other, don't we? But can I really, do I really see the Christ in somebody else? Can I look in someone's eyes and see past their personality, past how they look, past, but I wonder what they're thinking about me. Can I do that? Can I go beyond that and see that beautiful, sweet soul in them? See that Christ in that person? All I have to do is set the intention. All I have to do is try to look. We're all connected. The whole opponent prayer proves that. Dr. Hugh proves that. We're all connected. What affects one affects all. As you sit here, what happens in this room as you all sit here? Your vibration actually starts changing because you're all focused on the same thing. You're all starting to move into the same vibration. We're starting to affect each other. Greg Braden, I don't know if you've heard of him. I was in one of his workshops years ago. Heart Math, this is totally not on my notes. Um, Heart Math Institute contacted him when they very first started. Heart Math works with the, the heart brain. And they wanted to do a, a uh, trial with him, so they sent him this machine they'd invented. And there were only about 40 of us in this workshop. This was a long time ago. And Greg Braden hooked himself up with these things on his head and stuff, and then we had a, a screen up there that was going to measure what his, his brain was doing. And the thing was that if he went into a meditative state, eventually the whole room would end up in that state. So we could actually watch how more and more of us move into this higher vibration, this higher consciousness. I mean, here was a machine actually measuring it. We're all connected. You're, if you're sitting next to somebody right now, you're picking up their vibrations. And what I know 
as you start to move into harmony. Hawkins says, when we heal something in ourselves, we heal it for the world. So you probably can tell this week I'm a little bit more back to myself. I've kind of been really in a much higher vibration since I've come back. And I had, I didn't think I was going to share this, but I guess I am because it's important. I had probably three big things happen this week. And I watched the first one, it was pretty, pretty serious, but it didn't, it, I was vibrating really good, it didn't really, but then the other one came right on top of it, and then another one came right on top of that. And I was in tears. I had been in this awesome awareness, consciousness, and all of a sudden I was back, I was back down vibrating at that low level. And I went, what happened? And I said, but you know what, I know what to do. So I went in. And I sat, and I got still, and I took my crystal, and I sat with it for I don't know how long. And the shift totally moved me out of all that gunk, out of all that anger and blame and how could they. And again, I was in that place of peace, of pure love. So I know it works. I know it works. And the only thing that makes me miserable is me. You come here and, and we give you tools, but they're not going to do you any good if you don't use them. You have to take responsibility to use these tools. Sometimes it seems like an effort, but I could go watch TV or I could go sit and let myself become still until I'm peaceful. You have the time, we all have the time. Alkin says, one person, listen to the power you have, one person vibrating at 300. Now where's 300 on, oops. Okay, wait a minute, let me find 300 on here. Good, okay. 300, well it's got 310. 310 is willingness. All I have to do is be willing. How easy is that? All I have to do is be willing. Optimistic, set an intention, be hopeful, be inspiring. We can do that, right? Those are easy ones. One person vibrating at 300 offsets the negativity. Listen to this. You want to help change the world? You want peace on earth? One person vibrating at 300 offsets the negativity of 90,000 people below 200. One person affects 90,000. Think what you could do in that family dinner at Christmas time, guys. David Hawkins. Every thought, action, decision, or feeling Listen to this. Every thought, action, decision, or feeling creates an eddy in the interlocking, interbalancing energy fields of life. In this interconnected universe, we're not alone. Every improvement we make in our private world improves the world at large for everyone. Stop playing small. Stop being small. Each and every one of you have such a power in you. And you are ready. You are ready to progress to another awareness. So, notice when someone tells you their story, good stories are great, but when someone tells you their victim story, Notice what you feel inside. And then do, do you try to up them? Do you try to tell them your victim story? And then think about what you're doing for your own health, because you're throwing your, your vibration totally out of whack, 
right? Think about what you're doing for that other person. Think about what you're doing for the world. What I want you to hear today, I mean, it's about my responsibility. You turn the news on, you turn the news on. I don't turn the news on. You turn the news on. It's always something horrible, right? And it never changes. It might be a different person, a different place, but it's the same thing. And what happens? What's the feeling inside me? What is it inside me that makes me want to watch that? I want to live in that lower vibration. I'm embracing that lower vibration. I haven't realized how powerful I am. So the next time you turn that news on, notice what you're feeling and going, oh my God, I'm doing this to myself, but I'm also doing it. Maybe there was a victim. Maybe somebody got hurt. If I'm vibrating in judgment and blame, I'm hurting that person too. If you could just grab, okay, so here's what happened this week. Where I was at in Brazil was the uh, John of God Spiritual Healing Center. Some of you may know, some news came out this week that John of God was accused of um, sexual, sexual abuse. And I immediately heard about that. Nothing different than a murder someplace else, a crime someplace else. Where does my consciousness go? Does my consciousness go into judgment? Does it go into blame? Or can my consciousness stay in a vibration of unconditional love, knowing that that unconditional love will move out there and heal everybody involved? Whether these things are true or not true, that's not my decision. My decision and my responsibility is my thinking. As soon as I judge someone, as soon as I become the judge and jury, what vibration am I putting myself into? What vibration am I putting the world into? And whatever this thing is that's been shown, is it ever going to be healed if I stay in judgment? Of course not. You're going to keep putting that news on 10, 20, 30 years from now and seeing the same news over and over again because I haven't done my part to stop helping this world heal. I'm really passionate about this. And I really do my personal work on this stuff. I watch my thinking. I watch my thoughts. Do they go in the garbage? Sometimes you bet. Do I feel yucky sometimes? Yes. Do I stay there? Absolutely not. My family saw it this week. They saw me the day before and how in tears I was. And I came out the next morning and John goes, what happened? You're a totally different person because I did the work. I, said, I, I brought these crystals to you I didn't, because I know they're tools. That's what they are, they're tools. They're not magic, they're tools. They have a, a vibration that is stable. They help our vibration get stable. If you've got one on you now, be aware of that. I absolutely know you're here. I absolutely know those of you who are here today that are hearing this are ready to progress to a higher awareness. To a higher awareness of understanding. To a higher vibration on this consciousness scale. Marcel Vogel. Is a, was a research scientist for IBM Research Center for 27 years. He founded some 132 patterns. And he developed a crystal whose geometric shape causes the flow of health-promoting life force energy in the form of negative ions. So because of the way these crystals are cut, their energy is more intensive. That's a simple way of saying it. Here's what he says about it. He says, when it is precisely cut to the proper geometric form and when the human mind enters into relationship with its structural perfection in the vibration of love, the crystal emits a vibration which extends and amplifies the power and grasp of the user's mind. How I even got to Brazil was because I experienced a crystal bed last April at a retreat. These crystals 
have been put in the crystal bed. That's one of them there. This is what a crystal bed looks like. While I was at the retreat center, in deep meditation two different times, I saw our little room out there totally redone with a crystal bed in. Twice I went to buy one. And when I got there, I, something wouldn't let me buy it. My first Sunday back here, I got out of the car in the parking lot. There was a lady who had not seen Kim up to me. She says, do you know where the peace room is? And I said, oh, I'm Reverend Rose. I'll take you. And she said, I'm here to see you. I heard you just got back from the retreat center in Brazil. I said, yes. And she says, I have a crystal bed I want the church to use. You see how things happen? Do you see what vibration he does? When I told our guide, he goes, because they knew what I, what, I was, what I was doing there, he, he goes, I can't believe you're getting a crystal bed. And so Joyce, who had been here a couple weeks ago, has one. We are going to clear, that room is being cleared out, it's being painted, it's going to be cleaned up, and she is going to allow us to use her crystal bed in that room. Because I want you guys to be able to experience this tool, and that's what it is that as you lie down here, and it's usually 20 or 25 minutes, that's all, these lights move over the chakras in the body. And it totally, you know, so if you had a stressful day, if you've got stuff going on, you get under there and it starts to balance your vibration out. You, can, you will feel different things. Each one of you will have a different experience. But we're bringing that here, we're opening it up to this church, and we're opening it up to anybody in our community who wants to use it. And we're trying to keep the fee as low as we can, but to help cover the costs of the debt. Love is not anything we have to find. You are love, each and every one of you. And so is that person that you may not be very happy with right now. Doesn't mean they know it. Just know they're not any different than you were connected. And when we move into that love consciousness, nothing else matters. All these little problems seem so insignificant that ego gratification falls away, those desires fall away. They dissolve into nothing. So I'm going to take you through, I know you've had a lot of meditation today, but I'm going to take you through a very, very brief meditation. You know what, I'm going to ask you to turn the lights down, and I'll give you a signal as the window stop at TV. So, so many of you, um, you guys can stand up and walk out. Jeff has a book sign in, Jeff, we love you, and I see you there a little later. Bye, thank you. Um, some of you remember B.A. that used to be here. He sent me some time ago, um, sometimes when he's in a not such a great space, he'll sit at the keyboard and he'll write something and sing it and send it to me. He sent me this a long time ago and I kept saying, you know, that's a great song, it's a great meditation song, because it's not done yet, it's not done yet. And finally I went, you know, for me it's done. Because this is the perfect, perfect song for meditation today. And so I'm going to just say the words first, and then as, as we play it, I just want you to allow the energy he was in as he wrote this, he was given. And allow yourself to move in that place. Okay, Kayla, okay, go ahead and say it. You can get dim lights even more. Let love shine through, soften my mind, hold my spirit too, soften my thoughts, right Just breathe. Feel how 
dream that is. Look at my heart, my mind. My words stop and stop and stop and let love shine stop and my mind Soften my thoughts right from the start. Soften my words, soften my soul, soften my thoughts. Soften my words, soften my soul, soften my thoughts. Take a nice seat and just embrace that. Remember that this week. That when things rise up for you, to just say, just say to yourself, soften my heart, soften my thoughts. Let me soften this Christmas season. Let me be the demonstration of the true meaning of Christmas. And open your eyes. Let me continually choose positive thoughts over negative thoughts. Let me be aware that I want to stop vibrating over to people. Let me know that I have the power to change that news on the table. Let me know that I don't have to move into judgment and blame. I can rise above that, that I can hold higher vibration. I can be willing, I can have the courage to need more than what I am right now. I can have the courage to vibrate at a higher level and truly become a disciple of Jesus, teach what he came here to teach. God is love. And that's the most important thing we can learn. God bless you. I love each and every one of you. I know you have the power to take this into the world and into your people.